Hello friends and welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life where we learn about all the wonderful, awesome things that the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and it takes all the limits off our life. You don't have to be limited to the sickness and disease on your body. You can be healed of that by Jesus. You don't have to be limited by not having enough money to pay your bills and not having extra to be able to bless and, and help the a kingdom of God. You don't have to be limited by depression or discouragement, bad temper or worry or stress. Man, you can take the limits off when you know the real Jesus. Praise God. The true Christianity, not the false Christianity that so many want to preach. But uh, thank God for true Christianity that God bore your sins so you don't have to and you can live righteously because you are righteous. He bore your sicknesses so you could be well. He bore your poverty so you could be uh, financially independent. He bore your uh, depression and every negative emotion so you could be totally living in peace and joy all the days of your life. Be happy. Be, be a, a glad person all the time and, and uh, optimistic outlook on life. I'll tell you, it's a good life to live. Thank God. Well, we, has, we started a series six weeks ago. This is now going to begin our seventh week of a series. I called the first part of the series, What God Has Made You. And so we're going to be picking up from there. It's really going to be a three-part series. What God Has uh, Made You is what we taught the last 30 lessons, the last six weeks. Uh, what God's made you, that's going to be part A. And then what God is, has given you is going to be our second part of the series. It's still one series, but it's in three parts. And that'll be what God has given you. That's what we're starting today. And then the third part will be what God has called you to do. And I've, I've looked at these three parts uh, this way. When you put these three together, then you have the... ABCs um, of true Christianity. The ABCs of true Christianity. I remember somebody coming up to me at a book table, <clears throat> our book table at a meeting one time at a church that I was ministering at and said, Brother Larry, I'm just going to buy one thing on the table. What should I get? And I told him our series that we called He Was, I Am, which is the series that I'm teaching from. He Was, I Am. And I don't remember if he went and downloaded it from the website MP3 or whether he bought the CD series. But anyway, he ended up buying it. And um, I told him, I said, you know, this will help you probably more than any other subject that you could teach. You could teach on faith. You could teach on love. You could teach on all these wonderful things. Love being the most important, obviously. But you could teach on just the subject of love versus these ABCs, which includes God's love when you learn these ABCs. And you'll find out these ABCs will th thrust you forward in your life with God a hundred times faster than just a, uh, uh, teaching on one subject. So I encourage people, man, get a hold of the ABCs of true Christianity. So we taught... The A part of this series, that is what God has made you. Again, that was 30 lessons. Now I'm going to start teaching what God has given you. That will be part B. And then what God has called you to do will be part C. problem with a lot of Christians is they ne never learn their spiritual ABCs. <laughs> and because they didn't learn their ABCs, then when they get to their RST, UVW, and XYZs, you know, <laughs> Uh, they're all messed up. I thought about, yeah, they get to their RSTs. R, they're ragged. S, they're sad. T, they're tired. That leads them to their UVWs. U, uninformed. V, victimized. And W, weak. And by the time they get to their XYZs, they're really messed up, man. X, they feel like an X out. Y, they yield to the devil. And Z, they look like a zombie. <laughs> so, so this series is going to help you learn the ABCs so that you A, always B, believe, C, Christ. Always believe Christ. I believe these ABCs of true Christianity will cause you to always believe Christ, ABC, in every situation of your life. So, that's what we're doing in this series. 
We are teaching the A, what God has made you, the B, what God has given you, and the C, what God has called you to do. Our foundation text is over in 1 John 4, 17. So let's go back over there. We've been there 30, 30 lessons. Let's, let's make it 31 in a row, praise God. I'm going to always go to this on every lesson because we're, this is the foundation text of the whole series. 1 John 4, 17, the end of the verse, as he is, so are we in this world. The whole verse says, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness, confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. So we know that Jesus was judged for us. We can have confidence that the judge is going to say not guilty because <laughs> he's going to look at you through the blood of Jesus, praise God. So the end of the verse says, as he is, so are we in this world, as he is. So what he is, God has made you. What he has, God has given you, which is what we're starting today. And what he does is what God has enabled you to do. So we've already finished the A part of this series, so I'm just going to remind you what we learned. That we actually, in the 30 lessons, we went over 23 things that God has made you. Number one, you are a spirit. You are an eternal being. You have been created in the image and likeness of your Father God in His class of being right below Him. He created you that way. Number two, God made you one of His immediate family. You are a child, an offspring of the Almighty One. You're a son, a daughter of Him. You're part of the beloved family of God. Number three, God has also made you His servant. You are a son in position. You are a servant in purpose. So you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You serve Jesus to others. Number four, God has made you His friend. And we found out He made you a dear friend like a BFF, right? Uh, number five, God has given you an heir, or God has made you an heir of His. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. That means you get, we found out we, that you get to participate. We get to participate in all our inheritance. Number six, God has made you righteous with His righteousness. So you are in right standing with God regardless of what you've done. You are in right standing because of Jesus' blood making you righteous. Remember, becoming righteous has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with what Jesus did. He knew no sin, but He became sin that you would be made. Remember 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that you would be made the righteousness of God in Him. Number seven, God has made you part of His A team. You have been chosen. You're actually called a chosen one, just like Jesus was a chosen one. God says you are the best in your class, and that's why He wants you on His team. Number eight, you are God's representative, an ambassador of His government, and that government will never pass away. Number nine, God has made you an anointed one, just like He did Jesus. You are anointed, praise God. Number 10, God has made you a love being. You don't just have God's love, you are love. Number 11, God has made you the redeemed. That's why He says you as the redeemed, you're supposed to say you're redeemed. Number 12, God has made you royalty. You have royal blood flowing through you, praise God, the blood of Jesus. You are part of a royal family that is a royal universe family, not just a royal nation family here on planet earth. You're, you're higher royalty than that, than that. Number 13, God has made you holy. God has made you holy. He actually calls you holy even when you don't act that way. Again, these are things God's made you, not, not what you made yourself or what you've done to become this. No, this is what God's made you. Number 14, God has made you His purchased and protected possession. He's made you special. In fact, you are His prized possession. Number 10, God has made you His habitation, His dwelling place, the place He lives. The Bible calls you His temple. Number 16, God has made you a light for Him. You are called the light of the world. Just like when Jesus was on planet earth, He was called the light of the world. Now you, He calls you the light of the world. He's made you that. So you are light to your world. Number 17, God has made you the salt of the earth. 
the, the people in your world, God has made you salt to them. Number 18, God has made you an overcomer. Just by the mere truth that you got born again, born from above. Oh, glory to God, you got born of God and now you are. I mean, you got the title, world overcomer. Number 19, God has made you more than a conqueror. Not just a conquer and more, and we went into depth and detail. Remember, every one of these things, if you're just joining us, every one of these 23 things that we went over that God has made you, we spent a lot of time going to scriptures to substantiate each one, not just one scripture or two scriptures. We went to many scriptures for each point. Praise God. So God's made you more than a conqueror. Number 20, God has made you well in your body. He's made you whole physically. And that's important to know as well. Number 21, God has made you financially independent of the world system. Whew, that's great. Number 22, God has made you a soldier in his army, and he calls you a good soldier. And then number 23, God has made you complete in him. Wow. And we talked about a lot of that. So... Those are all things that we validated with many scriptural proofs. Therefore, God has, H-A-S, has made you all those things. Past tense, has made you all those things. Which means if God has made you those things, they are true whether you believe them or not. For example, God has made every believer a new creation, new creature. I mean, old things passed away, all of their sins forgiven, past, present, future, all of their sins washed away. And yet you'll hear many people say, well, you know, we're all sinners. You know, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. And then you can tell what God has made them has not become real to them. It's not revelation to them yet. They don't know that truth that would make them free. Because I learned a long time ago, no, no, we're not all sinners. If you're saved and I'm saved, we were sinners. I used to be a sinner. But when I got saved by His grace, I'm a brand spanking spank new creature in Christ Jesus. So, just because God has made us things doesn't mean you automatically become or, or have the fruit of that in your life. I can give you a good example. Remember over in Judges chapter 6? when God called Gideon to defeat the Midianites? Do you remember what God said he made Gideon? He called him. This is what he called Gideon. He said, you mighty man of valor. He didn't say, you are going to become a mighty man. No, he said, you mighty man. He called him a mighty man of valor, meaning God made him that before Gideon knew it because Gideon's response was, uh, God, you got the wrong guy. And this is the way you might feel of your own life when you start learning all these things God's made you. That you think, no, God, I'm not holy. No, I'm not righteous. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not an overcomer. I'm not more than a conqueror. But God's made you those things. So <clears throat> God called Gideon. He made Gideon uh, a man, uh, whew, a man, mighty man of valor. And so Gideon says, now you got the wrong dude, God. Uh, I'm just paraphrasing, of course. But God, my family, I come from like the lower of the lower class of, of people. Uh, my family and, and me, uh, you know, I'm just not, I, I don't have anything together, man. I'm poor. I don't know much. I, no, you just need to get somebody else. And God said, no, -uh, no, this is what I've called you. This is what I've made you. So, and of course you go on reading and God ends up using him to defeat the whole Midianite army. So, so my point is, even though God has made you something, it does not mean that you will experience the benefits associated with what he's made you. Believing or mixing our faith with what God has made us is what causes us <clears throat> to be and, and actually live what uh, he has actually made us. In other words, it becomes reality in our lives. So, so that's why we're talking about the ABCs, uh, the true Christianities, A's of what God has made you. And now we're going to talk about the B, what God has given you. <clears throat> As I start, let me tell you this. The list that I made, remember we just went over a list of what God has made you, 23 things. 
The list that I prepared of things the Bible says God has given you is one long list. <laughs> uh, uh, just, and, ju and just like I made, uh, made the list of things that God made you, um, it wasn't an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's things you or other people probably have thought of if they listened to the teaching that, well, you didn't cover this. Brother Larry, God made us this too. Uh, it wasn't exhaustive. Well, this list that, uh, of things that God has given you, I'm sure is probably not going to be exhaustive either. But you, you want to know how many things are on my list of things that God has already given you? Fifty. <laughs> you have 50. You heard, you heard me right. And I could just hear somebody say, oh my gosh, Brother Larry, the list that you gave us of what God has made us was 23. And that took six weeks long to get through. And you're going to give us a list of 50 things. We're going to be here till Christmas. No, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe it's going to take us near that long to talk about these 50 things. Here's the reason why. The list of 50 things that God has given you, uh, a lot of them directly correlate with the 23 things God made you. And so because of that, I don't think we're going to have to go into as much detail on some of the things because they correspond with things we've already covered. With that said, though, let's, let's go ahead and start our list because... On the very first thing that I'm going to cover, I am going to probably spend a lot of time on because uh, it's so important. Uh, so the number one thing uh, on our list of things that God has given you is this. God has given you Jesus. God has given you Himself. Boy, this is a lot more powerful than people are probably thinking. That statement God has given you, Jesus, you know, you can just take that. It just becomes a cliche if we're not careful. And that statement God gave you, Jesus, can mean more to one Christian and less to another based on their revelation of who God is in them, who Jesus is in them, and what Jesus has done for them. And that's why I'm going to spend more time on this particular point probably than I do on some of the other 50 things because I believe that when we get finished talking about God has given you Jesus, even Christians that consider themselves mature Christians, you may be watching right now, I believe it's going to enlighten you. I believe it's going to encourage you. I believe it's going to remind you. I believe it's going to stir you up about this gift from God. And let me say this too, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn and read scriptures that you have probably heard a plethora of times. You know what I mean by that? A whole, whole lot of times. And when I go to those scriptures, don't tune me out. Don't, don't, don't say, oh man, I know that verse. I've heard that verse before. Do you remember what Peter said in uh, 2 Peter 1, 12 and 13? He said, Wherefore, brethren, I'll not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of things, though you know them, though you be established in the present truth. Yeah, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. When I looked at that verse, let me just quote my paraphrase. I actually wrote my paraphrase so I could go back over it so you could understand what he was saying. Peter was saying this. This is my paraphrase. I would be remiss if I did not continually put you in remembrance of the things you have already learned and know. But as long as I am alive, I'm still going to remind you and get you thinking about them again and again and again. In other words, friends, faith comes by hearing, not from having heard. God's Word is always alive. It's always full of God. It's always full of wisdom. It's always full of His knowledge. It's always full of His anointing. It's always full of faith. Therefore, it doesn't matter how many times we have heard a verse spoken or how many times we have read it ourselves or how many times we've said it out of our own mouths, God's Word is inexhaustible. That means we need to keep hearing it many more times. So let's look at, look at some verses that talk about Jesus, what, 
what God has given you when He gave you Jesus. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 16. Remember I told you, I don't care how many times you think you've heard it or you know it, don't, don't turn me off. So let's look at a verse that, yes, we probably all know. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, since just about everybody knows this verse, let me just give you my paraphrase, because I, I try and make things sound uh, more modern, more uh, apropos, more, um, you know, people say, you know, I need something that's relevant for now. Well, here's relevant. Here, here's John 3.16 in my paraphrase. Because the people on earth were so dear to God, and because He loves them so much, He used His sole Son, Jesus, as a gift to humanity, as a payment to keep them from being eternally separated from Him. Now anyone, no matter who they are, can receive Jesus as their Savior, avoid eternal misery, and live a blissful life with God, one that will never end. Pretty, pretty good, isn't it? It just brings it down to where the rubber meets the road. A blissful life with God is not just referring to the life you have once you die and get to heaven. A blissful life is a heavenly, a joyous, a delightful, a wonderful, a fun, a, a happy life. That's the life that you and I are supposed to live once we receive Jesus. Not, not after we die and go to heaven, but once we get saved. I hope you're getting this. Eternal life doesn't begin when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life begins the moment you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Wow. Let's look at another verse. Turn one chapter over. We're in John chapter 3, verse 16. Go to John chapter 4. Let's just start reading in verse 5. We're talking about that God has given you Jesus. And what does that mean? Um, verse 5, so Jesus, John 4, 5. So Jesus, we're talking about Jesus, right? Jesus came to a city of Samaria, which is called... Uh, Sakar near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, uh, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said, Give me something to drink. Verse 8, the disciples had gone away into the city to buy food, so they weren't there. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, are talking to me and asking me for a drink? I'm a Samaritan woman. Uh, the Jews don't have any dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said, If you knew the gift of God, we're talking about this gift that God's given you, aren't we, Jesus? If you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. When there, uh, when then, where then do you get that living water? <clears throat> Uh, are you greater than our father Jacob, who's given us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his son and his livestock? Jesus answered, said, Whoever drinks of this water, natural water, will thirst again. <clears throat> but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So verse 10, notice verse 10. Jesus answered, said, If you knew the gift of God. Jesus calls himself a gift from God. And then in verse 14, he says that a gift will give you everlasting life. So that ties this verse back to the previous chapter, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave. So now we're seeing that Jesus is a gift given to you. God has given you Jesus, and it is a gift. How would you treat a gift if God all of a sudden manifested himself, Jesus all of a sudden appeared to you where you could see him with a physical eye, and he gave you a gift? I mean, he handed you a box, and, and, and he said, here, here's a gift for me, and then he disappeared. I'll bet you anything, you would treat that gift like none other. My God, Jesus just gave me a gift. That's what, that's what God has given you when He gave you Jesus. 
We need a lot more revelation on this then, don't we, friends? That's why I'm encouraging people to get my uh, series. You can download it in MP3 form or you can uh, get the CD series. It's two CDs if you order in CDs, but it's called In Him Scriptures, where I don't preach or teach like I am now on the subject, but all I do is go through two hours and 20 minutes of scriptures of what God has made you, what God has given you, and what God has called you to do. And you just listen to these scriptures and it just, it just starts becoming part of your thinking and part of your actions and part of your very lifestyle. And you find, wow, this has changed me more than anything I ever heard in the Bible. Yeah, that's because this is the true ABCs of true Christianity, praise God. So get a hold of that. And again, thank you partners for partnering with us. Your monthly partnerships is helping us reach all these other people that are watching us, whether they're watching us on Gospel Truth, whether they're watching us on YouTube, our website, however they're watching it when I post on Instagram or Twitter, however they're seeing things. Because of you partners supporting us, they are getting to watch it because you paid for uh, all the things it takes to get the gospel out. So thank you partners for doing that. And uh, if you're not a partner, pray, can consider becoming a partner. You'll help others just like yourself. And then share this on social media. Hey, we're out of time. We'll see you next program. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to larryhutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you know yourself? Who you really are? Not the natural carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order In Him scriptures, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to larryhutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.